Today's video is on the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry. I love seeing these sneak peek quick summary videos when I'm planning my trips, and so hopefully this video provides that information for you. The museum is located south of downtown, and we were in the Chicago suburbs visiting family, and the drive to and from downtown was about an hour with traffic. The parking is on-site underground. The parking fee was pretty steep though at $22 unless you have a family membership. And so we did the math. If we were to just get tickets for the day, it was $22 for a grown-up, $13 for a kid aged 3 to 11. Art of the Brick was an additional $72 for our group. And then a stroller rental was $3 for a single and $5 for a double. So all together, it would have been $189 for the day versus a family membership covers two adults, all the kids, plus another guest, plus free parking and free stroller rentals. Art of the Brick as an exhibit is still extra, but at a discounted rate of $7 per person. So all together, a family membership was $230. And since we have family in the area, we expect we would be back at some point in the year anyway so it made more sense for us to go ahead and get a membership. Regardless of whether a membership makes sense for you, I definitely recommend getting the tickets online. Some of the exhibits are timed entries and they did sell out when we were there. Plus, there was this huge line to purchase tickets on site when we arrived, so we were definitely glad we got them online. Our main goals for the trip were to see the Christmas trees uh, because it's the holiday season and then also to see the Lego exhibit which was called Art of the Brick and then in the remaining time we were gonna just hit up whatever we can. So first up is the Christmas trees. The exhibit is here until January 8th and it's included with the standard ticket entry to the museum. There are a total of 50 trees, each inspired by a different country. Even though the trees aren't necessarily representative of how a Christmas tree would be decorated in that place, case in point, this Chinese themed one has Cantonese as the Christmas greeting and then there are all these kind of more New Year's type of decorations. There are still nuggets of information you can glean from the ornaments and the signage under the trees do explain a little bit more and give more context. And honestly, for a lot of people, my kids included, the main highlight is really just how lit up everything was and how festive the whole room was. Their favorite Christmas tree was the Colombia themed one, mainly because there were characters from Encanto on there. The biggest tree in the middle of the room is a really nicely decorated giant tree and it's a wonderful photo op for the family. Even though it was a busy Saturday when we went, we still had plenty of opportunity to take pictures and move around. Kind of along the same area, as the Christmas trees were little displays about additional holidays celebrated throughout the world, such as Diwali, Lunar New Year, and Hanukkah. Next, moving on to Art of the Brick. This exhibit is here until January 16th, and it does require a separate timed entry ticket. When we first entered the room, the first few Lego statues were, like, really visceral. I loved it. But I did wonder whether the kids would get kind of scared um, because it was pretty dramatic lighting, but thankfully they all enjoyed it. I thought it was super cool to see these animal shaped brick projects and they even took the pictures of the end product. They placed these animals into different habitats and they made these really cool photographs of each of them. There was a Michelle Obama portrait one that I thought was really cool. And then lastly, this is the 12 days of Christmas display with all 12 rows representing each day of Christmas, ending with the partridge and the pear tree. I absolutely love that they added the eggs for the geese. I mean, Obviously, you have to, they're laying, but that level of detail all around was just so mind-blowing and so cool to see. This whole display took an obscene number of Lego bricks to make, so hats off to the creator, and I really enjoyed this exhibit. One tip I have for you is make sure you're checking out both of the exhibit halls. Numbered one and two, we made the mistake of staying too long in one room, and then we were meandering and snacking and doing other stuff, and so we missed our time slot for the second room, and unfortunately, we weren't able to get in because it was sold out for the day. There's supposed to be this giant T-Rex Lego statue in this other room, and I'm kind of bummed that we missed it. Along the same level, there was a section on natural disaster type stuff, and that exhibit was called The Science Storms. It's a very physics-based exhibit, 
with tornadoes, tsunamis, avalanches. It was definitely over our kindergartner's head, but she's also always been obsessed with natural disasters and there was plenty for little hands to touch, like little knobs to turn, buttons to push. So our kids still had a really great time exploring the area and we read off what we can and tried to add a bit of explanation when they're up for it. After all that exploring, it was time for a donut break. The food area was one level down from all that action. It was getting a little late in the day and so we were actually the last customers to get in around 4 p.m. There were slim pickings at the snack shop. The kids loved it either way and per their report, this part was the favorite part of the whole trip. I personally found the donuts a little bit too sweet. I think for future visits, this area would be a really good spot to have a snack that we bring from home, kind of to complement the sweet treats from the shop. And then there were a few more exhibits that we briefly explored back up on that main level. There was a whole area on trains and transportation with models of the skylines of Chicago and Seattle. And then the last exhibit we looked at was the Pioneer Zephyr exhibit by the exit. It talked about rail travel from back in the 30s and it was kind of cool to kind of touch around and feel what it would be like to travel back in the day. I know there's like 10 more exhibits that we just didn't have enough time for. There's a body anatomy one, there was one about mirrors which looked really cool, and then there was this magic fairy castle one that I know the girls would have loved, but literally we just ran out of time and we wanted to take our time and enjoy the exhibits that we did get to check out. Altogether, we spent two and a half hours at the museum and all of us were completely tired. The kids took a really nice nap on the way home and I highly recommend checking out the museum whether you're looking for a holiday activity or if you're just in the area and you enjoy museums. We all had a good time and we'll definitely be back. You know, because we paid for the membership, but also because it was fun. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider subscribing. I'm planning to include family travel slash excursion videos about once a month and we do have a pretty big trip coming up so stay tuned for that. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!